is Abby Martin, one of the finest filmmakers and host, host of The Empire Files, one of the most impressive journalists and broadcasters I've ever worked with, and I'm glad to say she joins us on the mother of all talk shows now. Abby, welcome back. It's been some time. Uh, what were your thoughts when you saw the beneficence of Joe Biden parachuting in some loaves and fishes not to feed the multitudes in the Gaza Strip? You both, both you and I know the Gaza Strip very well. You made a wonderful uh, series of films about it. Were you as sickened by me at the revolting fear that was dropping from the air from American Air Force jets? Well, first of all, George, congratulations on your resounding victory. Uh, I think that I could speak on behalf of the world when I say we are thrilled to have you back in office. I mean, look, Joe Biden is a genocidaire. He's a criminal. He's sitting there eating ice cream, pontificating on, oh, maybe we can have a ceasefire next week or perhaps the week after. It's an abomination as 2.3 million people less now uh, since so many scores have been killed. Uh, but starvation has taken hold, George, and we know that dropping a mere 28,000, I think, aid packets, food packets, as bombs are also simultaneously being dropped while people are starving to death, what does that do? It's a drop in the bucket. And you have the audacity of publications like the New York Times who just ran with a falsified story about mass rape taking place hiring random psychopaths to adjudicate the atrocities on October 7th. And they're writing haikus, trying to talk around this nonsense on the heels of this massacre, this widespread massacre where Israeli tanks and snipers open fire on Palestinians scavenging, starving to death. George, this is what we're dealing with. It's complete moral bankruptcy from the entire world. And look at two Congress people in our Congress, Cori Bush and Rashida Tlaib, they're the only people who have pledged to stop arming this genocidal apartheid state. I'm embarrassed to be an American. I'm embarrassed that this is the political representation that we have five months in to this genocide, George. It is very powerful uh, as you express it. Uh, let, let's, let's leave, the, if you like, the superficial politics behind and, and dive uh, deeper. It is it has to be a matter of deep psychology uh, for so many politicians in your country and in mine to be as unmoved by what you and I are watching as we are moved by it. What, what lies beneath it? What's the reason for our politicians being completely unmoved at massacres of infants, at the maiming amputations and, you know, heads burst open of little babies being taken to now non-existent hospitals. How is it possible not to be moved by that? Five months of seeing children shredded apart. I, I do not know the answer to that, George, other than political cowardice and the fact that these politicians only care about one thing and one thing only, their political careers. You do not get into politics in either of our countries if you are a moral person, other than, of course, people like you. I mean, it is unbelievable and disgusting to see the amount of politicians completely beholden to a genocidal apartheid state committing genocide. I mean, killing scores of civilians, women, Infants, like you said, I mean, this is a genocidal policy. You are depriving infants of formula and nursing mothers of water. Look, Joe Biden said it himself, and I think he elucidated it perfectly uh, decades ago on the House floor when he said, if Israel didn't exist, we would need to create her to serve our interests. And when you look at Israel, I mean, this tiny state, I mean, it might as well be the 51st state. It's an appendage of the U.S. empire. It's a settler colonial outpost, and it's used as a battering ram for U.S. imperialism and its junior collaborators, which is the United Kingdom. So it's it's sick that, I mean, you see Code Pink, you see five months of people confronting politicians in the halls of Congress, marching out in the streets, doing civil disobedience actions everywhere, right? And these politicians remain unmoved, unmoved. 
how is that possible? How are you a human being? How is it possible that John Kirby's sitting up there crying crocodile tears for children in Ukraine and is completely stoic as infant after infant are shredded to bits? I can't claim to know, George. I'm sitting here every day wrapping my mind around the medieval barbarism that we're seeing unfold that really just surpass the human limitations of evil every single day. It has brought the worst out in our public officials, uh, but it has also brought the best out in our uh, public. Uh, there's never been an anti-war movement like the one we have now uh, for an end to the slaughter in Gaza. Uh, in, in Britain, uh, for now, it's almost 150 days, I think, uh, there has not been a single day when there has not been a significant action, even in the smallest towns. Uh, I lived in, until Thursday uh, in a very small town in Scotland where a small number, but a dedicated number of people, were out protesting every day. And that's true in every village, town, hamlet, city uh, throughout the United Kingdom. And I'm certain it's also true in the U.S., Indeed. I mean, I was radicalized uh, on the heels of the Iraq war in a post 9-11 frenzy of Islamophobia and just rabid nationalism and unquestioning patriotism. And I think that finally we're seeing a new um, internationalist anti-war movement that's questioning U.S. empire finally, that's tying all of these disparate movements together, understanding that we are all, uh, we are no one's free until all of us are free finally humanizing Palestinians, finally rejecting uh, the dogma of the corporate media, the orthodoxy uh, of U.S. capitalism. It's a beautiful thing to witness, George. It's very unfortunate that there has to be a massacre of this magnitude for so many people to wake up, but I am here for it. I'm here for it. I'm here for the rejection of the two-party system. I'm here for Gen Z saying, no, we're not going to vote for genocide ears. We're not going to vote for a party that's committing genocide. It's it's beautiful to see so many tens of millions of people around the world rejecting this, George, despite the detachment and the disenfranchisement of our political system and our representation, the people that claim to represent us but do not. There's such a severe detachment from our government to the people in the streets, and they're depending on us getting tired, right? They want us to forget. Well, no, we see with our own eyes. We're not going to get tired. We know what justice looks like. And we're not going to stop until that's achieved. And that means Palestine being free. It doesn't just mean an end to the bloodletting. It means an end to the occupation, and it means the liberation of Palestine. And it's an incredible thing to see this global movement taking root. And it's not going to stop, George. I think we both know that. And that's what terrifies them. Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, now, uh, as well as being activists, both of us are also uh, involved in media, uh, although uh, YouTube, I think, wiped out a lot of your work, uh, some of the finest work uh, produced in the English language, uh, was wiped out by the, uh, by the book, book burners uh, of uh, the new censors in, in uh, big tech. But uh, so let's talk about media, if we can, for a minute. Uh, again, one marvels at the ability of people who call themselves journalists to be unmoved by the plight of Julian Assange in a London dungeon and to be ready to uh, haiku, as you wonderfully put it, uh, for Israel in the most base and degraded way, uh, and you name-check the New York Times, but the New York Times is not alone, is it? The New York Times, all of these uh, television stations, MSNBC and Rachel Maddow and all of these people, again I ask, although I appreciate it's difficult to come up with an answer, what moves them? What allows them to sleep at night, knowing as they must, because they're seeing the same videos as you and me, it just seems to have a different impact uh, on them than it does on us. You know, I always say, George, that 
corporate media, you know, as we know, is subsidized by the very institutions that journalists should be exposing, right? Banks, oil companies, defense contractors. When you are a journalist getting into corporate media, uh, you are a willing agent of empire. You have to believe in the reigning orthodoxy of global capitalism and of U.S. imperialism. Otherwise, you will not sustain jobs in these institutions. And so I think people like Rachel Maddow, Andrea Mitchell, I mean, Anderson Cooper, we know that he, you know, he donned a CIA jacket. He tried to get into the CIA just like Tucker Carlson once did. I mean, look, it, 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 I think it's really simple. I mean, you have to be a true believer in the system. And you have to wash away all of the crimes and atrocities that are being committed in our names. And you have to apologize for them. And I think that we see revolts happening within the institutions, um, people writing you know, sternly worded letters, whether it be in the halls of Congress, these staffers, or within uh, the halls of the New York Times saying, this is too much for us. Look, leave, leave your posts, okay? Because at this point you're an accomplice because institutions like the New York Times, the Washington Post, all of these Beltway media publications and so-called papers of record, they are accomplices to genocide. Those who are running the editorial line in these publications should be brought up to The Hague, right? For complicity, for engineering and manufacturing consent among the American public. Because if these headlines were written differently, if the stories weren't buried, the leads weren't buried at paragraph eight, you know, I mean, I think that the public opinion would have been changed decades ago, George. We know how this works. And when you have an institution like the New York Times, I mean, I have to keep going back to that because that's what so many liberals take as the Bible in this country. But look at Judith Miller, you know, coming out saying, oh, yeah, we screwed up in the wake of the Iraq war. And look at them today. They've learned nothing. We have to reject these institutions wholly, right? And, and once and for all. And I think that's what we're seeing. I mean, generationally, there's such a, a huge rejection of that corporate line. And, you know, people are finally seeking truth elsewhere and knowing we're not going to change these institutions by asking them to cover us fairly or to humanize Palestinians or Arabs. No, that's not the way it's going to work. Because we know that all of these journalists, they, they have opinions. They want to appear neutral. No, they just couch their opinions in think tanks that are subsidized by the very same blood, lust, genocidal war profiteers that dictate to us what's going on on corporate media and these and these forums and panels. You know, it, it's sick, George. And I think that we know the way it works. And that's why, you know, previously I went to a network like RT or Telesaur to circumvent that bias, but to tell the truth about my country, because you're simply not allowed to. But look at what they did. They banned, they, they treated us like infants. They infantilized us all by just succumbing to censorship, like they were chomping at the bit to do for so long. Look at what they did to uh, Tucker Carlson for going and interviewing Putin. They said he should be sanctioned, that Putin should not be heard. Look, I, I think what, you know, I, I have, a lot of disagreements with Putin, but why should we not hear from world leaders? I want to judge with my own mind and to see with my own eyes what people think and what people are telling me about global affairs. I'm not a child, so I don't like global powers and uh, media giants algorithmically dictating and narrating and curating my reality. I can speak and learn for myself, but that's what they're scared of again, George. They're scared of people with free minds to learn and choose for themselves what the truth and reality really is. Now, uh, Oscar Wilde said we were two people divided by a common language. I say that Britain and its political class are two cheeks of the same arse. You'd say <laughs> two cheeks of the same ass. Uh, but it is true, isn't it, uh, that you've got a choice between Genocide Joe and Zion Don, and we've got a... Uh, 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 a choice between, if anything, two even more midget uh, intellects <laughs> and political uh, ideologies. Uh, how are we going to get out of this, Abby? I mean, the left is so disenfranchised in this country. We're blamed for every political upset, and you know they they just 
don't cater to us at all. We know um, there's no real third party option in this country. The entire system is completely rigged. At this point, even members of the squad are essentially just institutional obstacles from us attaining anything that we actually want to do. I think this genocide has really revealed plainly um, who's on our side and who's not, George. I mean, look, th there's so many elements that are rigged in the American political system. It, it's a complete joke. And I think, you know, in the wake of Bernie, I was I was very excited about the Bernie movement, not necessarily Bernie himself, although he he certainly was one of the better figures in Congress for the last several decades, and I think uh, true to a certain extent to himself. But at this point, I think in the wake of that, the millions of people who simply didn't know where to go after Genocide Joe took office and they picked the top cop on the heels of the Black Lives Matter movement to really just say F you to the millions of people who are out in the streets, the biggest social movement since civil rights in this country. Um, I think that really says it all about the utter contempt that the political establishment has for social movements and for the youth. And look, the youth is looking at the future of this country and saying we're on the precipice of climate catastrophe. Half the people living in this country don't have enough money uh, in savings. They're living paycheck to paycheck. No wonder half of the eligible voters don't engage at all. But they're just simply going to blame Jill Stein or Cornell West or the young people for not voting for genocide joe a second term and you know in the words of my palestinian friend ali abu nima he said look joe biden is our hitler so don't tell me that he's the lesser of two evils even if trump would be doing the exact same thing he is our hitler so how dare you talk down to us and tell us patho you know pathologize the left and say no 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 you don't understand trump could be in office well look this is already the worst case scenario for so many people and people who just are moral people. You don't have to be Muslim, Palestinian, right, or Arab. You simply just have to be a free thinker and someone who has moral courage and sees with their own eyes what is going on. Um, so I think Joe Biden needs to be and, and will be punished at the ballot box. And there's really no other avenues to do so politically other than what people are doing, getting out in the streets in the millions Right. And that's what needs to happen. We need to shut down business as usual, George, and we need to keep going until they listen to us, until they are forced to act on our behalf. And that's the only way social change has ever happened in this country. Voting is secondary. Voting happens once every two to four years. The real change that happens is the people who are out in the streets every single day, all day, making it happen. And we will continue to do so until we have a viable future. Amen, amen. I know, I just know, I can see it on my screen. Uh, people are asking where they can find your work now, Abby. What's the best place for people to go uh, to follow you? Go to uh, my social media. I'm at Abby Martin on Twitter. You can go to earthsgreatestenemy.com. I'm in the throes of a new movie, George, exposing the totality of U.S. military pollution. Um, it started off as a project about carbon emissions and how the U.S. military is completely exempt and one of the largest contributors, equivalent to 140 countries, but it goes so much farther than that. So we're exposing the entire system. It's been in the works for three years. It's coming out this year. Check it out. And also GazaFightsForFreedom.com, available in several languages. Please spread the word. Empire Files on YouTube is where you can see all of my interviews and short documentaries. George, thank you so much. Much power to you and much respect. Thank you. The pleasure is mine. Love to all the family. That is the great Abby Martin, journalist, host of the Empire Files.